Shalom. Call hello, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all my fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom to do so now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth among the heathen that look like the heathen, the Israelite foreigners. And to the Akwaf that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone here in Chicago coming at you with another lesson in truth. And um, as you can see on the screen, there's a video called Hollywood is Dead. Uh, and it says uh, Mel Gibson leaks Oprah's secret agenda in relation to Sound of Freedom. All right. And this is uh, Sibo and Snapper. So what's her snapper? All right, her, her her the thing between her legs, but then she also talks about the Holy Spirit. See this. This is a. Let me just go straight to this, and then I'll I'll let you listen to what they say. But they're they call themselves exposing wickedness when they're wicked themselves. He's got a complete bald face and a bald head, where he's clearly put a razor to his face, to his beard, to his head, which is uh goes against the customs of the Israelites, which he is, which we are. All right, that goes against the instructions in the Bible. A man is supposed to have hair on his face. The mighty Murph sent me a video yesterday of some muscle bound trainer who's all on the gram and on on YouTube, you know, telling you how to, how to train virtually, and he's talking about success, 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 and how every president, you know, he's using all these Edomites as a as a guide to why he wears, you know, why he shaves his face completely bald and his face completely bald and about success and every salesman and all that, all that kind of mess. All right. That's, that's a man who knows absolutely nothing about the truth, knows nothing about the Lord, you know, and, and all that, all that muscles and money that he's making is going to mean nothing. All right. Uh, upon the return of the Lord, man, he's going to be filthy to the Lord and unclean. But uh, before I play this this short clip, I'm just going to, this is like a 20 minute video. I'm just going to play about, you know, about four minutes of it. All right. But I want to go into the scriptures first, uh, to a couple of scriptures first. And I'm going to start at rock. All right. Just to get on, on sister girl here with the hope that she actually repents and, you know, and hears the truth and, and does the truth. So I'm, I'm not. You know, it's not like I hate this woman or anything, but being the men of the Lord, we know when Samuel came, they said, this thou comest peacefully, they were afraid of him. So when the men of the Lord, that's the thing. You people don't fear the, fear the Lord, neither do you fear his men. And you should, because when they pronounce judgment, when they say things, they're saying it straight from, from on high. All right. So this is uh, the book of Sirach. The 26th chapter, which is uh, not very friendly to, to unrighteous women. All right. Notice I said unrighteous women. So this is, uh, I'm going to start at verse uh, 1. I'm going to start for read verse 1. It says, blessed is a man that have a virtuous wife, for the number of his days shall be double. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> just be straight up honest with you. There are very few men breathing that have a virtuous wife. <clears throat> Including yours, that God is listening right now. Okay? Jumping down to verse 8. A drunken woman and a gather abroad cause of great anger. She will not cover her own shame. So a woman is actually supposed to cover her head. And with modest apparel. This woman's head is not covered. Neither is she wearing modest apparel. It says the whoredom of a woman may be known in her haughty looks and eyelids. If the daughter, if thy daughter be shameless, keep her straightly, lest she abuse herself through overmuch liberty. So she going to the spot, going to the club like that. All right. And with this next part, I'm not saying that this is this woman, but this is many women. All right. She will open her mouth as a thirsty traveler. <clears throat> when he have found a fountain and drink of every water near her. So, uh, what do they call that? 
in the hood, sloppy toppy. Okay. Uh, by every hedge, she shall sit down and open her quiver against every arrow. Pound town. The grace of a wife delighted her husband, and her discretion will fatten his bones. A silent loving woman is a gift from the Lord. There is nothing much worth as a, as a mind well instructed. A shamefaced and faithful woman is a double grace. And her continent uh, mind can be cannot be valued. So the percentage of men who have that are <laughs> next to zero. All right. They are next to zero. Uh, uh, Sirach 26, 22. A harlot can be accounted as spittle. All right. But a, but a married woman is a tower against the death of her husband. All right. A wicked woman is given to the portion to a wicked man, but a godly woman is given to him that feareth the Lord. All right. So, you know, everybody goes through it with their women. If the Lord removes a woman out of your life, that was, that was a purpose for that. All right. Because a woman is either a blessing or a punishment. All right. Or she's used to, to, you know, for you to grow. It says a dis a dishonest woman contemneth shame, but an honest woman will reverence her husband. A shameless woman shall be counted as a dog. We all know what a female dog dog is, you know, too short said at the best. But she shall be shame faced will fear the Lord. So everyone wants that shame faced, quiet, uh, helpful, stand by you woman. And um, to be quite frankly, most of us are not going to get it until the day of our power, until we get to the other side. All right. Watch, keep recording. All right, y'all. We'll, we'll right. So it's this clip surfacing oh, around. Keep recording. Keep you know what? Hold on. Let's get on him. We can't let him get away. So the ladies are like, yeah, we're good. Let's get on this, this dude. Let's go to the book of Leviticus. Because he going off. This is Leviticus 19 and 27. And it reads, You shall not round the corners of your head. So that's putting that razor to your head. Neither shall thou mar the corners of thy beard. This dude got no beard. He ain't marred the corners. He, he, he shaved his beard clean off. All right, that's a very effeminate look, not masculine or manly at all. Ye should not make any cuttings in your flesh for the dead, nor print any marks upon you. I am your howl. So the Lord commanded us not to have tattoos. Now, I got wicked tattoos, and I'm ashamed of them, you know. But the things you did before this truth, you know, the Lord, you know, he winks at them. But once you know it, you know, you can't go out and get more and that whole sort of thing. All right. And it was a damn Edomite when I was in, in Thailand that uh, coerced me into getting a tattoo. He even was uh, paid for it. He was like, ah, oh, I got this. It's on me. It's my treat. Never trust thy enemy, y'all. But uh, let's get into this exposure. And by the way, if you look over in the uh, in the thumbnails, it's just video after video uh, on the same subject matter. A fight against the world. Well, I'm going to just read them from top down. All right. And then I'll let these few minutes of this video play. It says the fight against the world, slavery, child slavery and sex trade. All right. Next one is uh, and that's by Jordan B. P P uh, Peterson. All right. Now, yeah, I've seen his videos before. The next one is uh, by the real the real a, a dog. Uh, it says Hollywood is pissed. Hollywood panics as Mel Gibson. All right. Next one is by Redacted Bombshell. Mel Gibson about to expose all of them. So don't so expect, you know, there's something that's going to happen to Mel Gibson and Jim Caviezel. Don't don't be shocked if something happens to them. All right. Um, the next one. Um, it's by Jamel, a.k.a. Jamel. More than, well, I can't see the rest of the name. Name should be short, Jamel. 
All right, uh, it says it's all coming out. Mel Gibson exposed Oprah, so Oprah's on a on a planet. Then there's one <laughs> planet video in there, actually, which I want to watch. That that's that's about jujitsu. Uh and Jim, and then the next one is by Jordan B. Peterson again. Jim Caviezel on Darkness of the Devil. Heath Ledger. Wow. Okay, so they're going in. All right, and what it comes down to is that Esau Edom is being exposed. All right, so let's let a little bit of this video play, and then I'll finish up with some more scriptures, and we'll wrap this thing up. <laughs> so it's this clip surfacing around saying Mel Gibson he exposes Oprah questionable actions for Hollywood elite. So they're saying Oprah what? may be the game. We're gonna no see. Way. Now I met Oprah twice. All right. When I was in the world, I actually went on her show um, for the, you know, the work that I used to do, all right? And uh, I went on her show twice with my with the whole crew, every, you know, my whole place that worked with me. Um, and I was behind the scenes. I never got to come out and do the whole pose with the crew because that day I wasn't there. Because uh, I think we it was three days of shooting. We were going back and forth. But... Uh, my work that I that I that I did was displayed on the show, and Oprah had a presence. And at the time in the world, you know, I'm thinking this is a good thing. But thinking back, the the presence that was with her was not a good one at all. Right? It it was not. All right. You know, when the Lord opened your your eyes, man, it's it's truly a blessing. You do not want to be walking around. With your eyes closed and in darkness. But here we go. Yeah. We're gonna see how true for it is. I you, just don't see it. You get it. You get a kid. But I like to the benefit of the doubt. I really do. I have to allow the Holy Spirit to put things in my spirit. You get a kid. Now you, you know, we just heard all the scriptures that we read uh you know about her parents and her peril and her complete opposite of being a woman that's that's holy in appearance. She's not even trying and talk about the Holy Spirit putting something on her spirit. And the Holy Spirit doesn't deal with women like that. Hold on. You know what? <clears throat> because she's in a position where she's on a platform where she can teach and women are not supposed to speak publicly, especially when when uh, when it comes to to uh, guiding men. That is a job of, of a man and a man only. The only place that a woman is to speak is at home. Among, you know, she got the people in her household when her husband's not around. Those that are under her, meaning her children. But this is uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and uh, 34 and 35. And it reads, let your woman keep silence in the churches, meaning the body. All right. Because, you know, what, what you people call a church, that building, that's not a church. All right. It says, let your woman keep silence in the churches. For it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. So this is coming straight from the Lord, from heaven, from on high in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. So these are not my words. And if you got a problem with it, then you got a problem with who you call God and Jesus, which that isn't their names. All right. It says, and if she will learn anything, let let and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church within the body. A woman's not supposed to be opening her mouth unless there's a trial going on or something to that fact. Unless she is a witness or she is a victim and you're asking what happened to her and she has to speak then. Other than that, a woman's not supposed to be speaking on any platform. A woman's not supposed to be put in a position of authority over men, according to the Bible. It tells you that also in Timothy. All right. Matter of fact, let's go ahead and get it. First Timothy 2. And uh, start at 11. And it reads, let the woman keep silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp the authority over the man, but to be in silence. All right. So women police officers, women bosses, women managers, that's not supposed to be. And then look at the divorce rate and the, you know, and the, the, the family condition. Uh, uh, of the West as a result of that and look and you can't you can't deny the numbers 
and you look at the numbers prior to women being put in those positions and you look at the numbers of failed families after women are put in those positions. All right. It says, um, for Adam was first formed, then Eve. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved and childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and holiness and sobriety. So if you, you know, just because you believe in calling the name of Yahweh, why Yahweh Shai, if you're not, you know, uh, you know, you won't be saved unless you continue in faith, charity, holiness, and sobriety. So if you violate any of those, you you know, well, it's not going to be too good for you in the, in the days to come. And those days are upon us. I think it was a couple thousand major stores uh, shut down uh, yesterday or the day before quietly well, in the midst of all this drama that's going on, all this distraction news. So America is, is collapsing and it's collapsing fast. All right. And at the same time, Esau Edom is being exposed. All right. And that's that's all a part of prophecy. You know, this Edomite and, and he's been exposed by a lot of other Edomites. OK. OK. And sometimes also being exposed by, you know, the uh, uh, the scattered that among them that looked like them. All right. Because there's a lot of people who who look like Esau that are not. And some of them are some of the main ones that are, ex that are exposing that exposing Esau. That's what's, and that's why I'm always saying that Esau is always so fascinated with DNA because I believe that D, you know all that DNA gathering for all that 23andMe garbage, all those lies, was really trying to determine what uh, uh, what so-called white people are not white people. All right, because the worst type of uh, the worst type of nigga is one that could pass for being white. All right, and that's that's a that's a threat to Esau. Superiority, and that's a threat to his comfortability. All right, and I know this because my my mother. I know this personally. My mother came from a family like that, where where some of her family members could pass for white and live their lives as white, and still couldn't duck and dodge the the, the curses. All right, and you get a kid. And I got to see more ifs. First time I really came over here. You know, I had a whole bunch of weird paranoid suspicions about what the hell was going on because there was a lot of stuff I couldn't understand. You're seven years old and someone is stroking you. It feels good. What? Our future is our children. You can obviously tell. Now I want to say that that little bite, well, that was sound. That was clips. I don't, right. so I don't know what that, that little sound? clip said. Yeah. And I ain't taking it up for Oprah because I don't know no Oprah. But I'm just saying that little clip seemed edited. Now, the first step in eradicating this crime is awareness. Give the damn commercials. The flow of the ocean. Uh, and they're going to make that the thumbnail, I promise you. <laughs> the latest buzz in Tinseltown is all about Mel Gibson's explosive revelations in the so film cute. Sound of Freedom. Brace yourselves as Mel pulls back the curtain on the dark underbelly of Hollywood's elite, exposing their alleged involvement in the scandalous world of illicit human trade. And guess who's caught right in the middle of it? None other than the iconic Oprah Winfrey. Okay. Let's go to the scriptures. Uh, do I want Second Thessalonians first, or do I want? You know, I'm gonna go to Isaiah because what's happening is Esau is being brought down, and the same way he does, the Lord is doing to him. All right, because what Esau does uh, does to 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 anyone is he attacks and destroys that character. All right, through his through his uh, propaganda. Through his um, his MSM, his mainstream media. All right, that's what he does. He destroys you through his mainstream media by by attacking your name and your character. So when things come upon you, you know, dehumanize you. But this is Isaiah fourteen. I'm gonna start at verse five and read through. Uh, Yeah, let's just read verse 5 first. It says, Isaiah 14 and 5, The Lord have broken a staff of the wicked and the scepters of the rulers, all right, who smote the people with continual wrath and stroke. He have ruled nations in his anger and is, persecu and is persecuted and none hindereth. All right, the whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break out forth singing. Yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee. 
and the cedars of Lebanon saying, since thou art laid down, no fellows are come against us. So, you know, even the trees rejoice when this man goes down. All right. I mean, look at the condition of the trees now, especially here in the West with all the stuff that they spray in the sky. If you've been keeping up with my TikTok shorts. All right. It says. Um, and then you got the nation standing up against them. This is verse 10. All they that speak and say unto thee, art thou also become as weak as we? Art thou become like unto us? All right. So all these nations, you know, the BRICS countries and all these other nations that once would not even dare to, to look sideways at America now pointing fingers at them. OK. Verse 11. Thy pomp is brought down to the grave and the noise of thy vows and the worms is spread under thee and the worms cover thee. So that pompous, arrogant attitude is being put on, on display and is being brought to the grave and worms are, are, are you know, are connected to the decay of death. I mean, America is dying. The power structure of Esau, Edom, the so-called white man is dying, is ruined, and is falling apart. And all the wickedness that he does, and his and his main partner, it, one of his main partners in this whole thing is, well, you said it, look at it on the screen. All right? And she was controlling that whole Harpo Studios. All right? A lot of men that, that were under her and worked for her. Okay? Yeah. And so that that undying, un, unending uh, uh, bond between Eve and the serpent and the seed of the serpent, which is Esau Edom. All right. Let's go to. Uh, Habakkuk. Two and sixteen, I believe, fifteen, sixteen, and it reads, "Woe unto them that giveth his neighbor drink, that puttest thy bottle to him and makest him drunk also, that thou mayest look upon his nakedness." So, you know, I, I heard a scenario how you know some people got invited to the island by a certain rich man, and when they got to the island, there was topless women everywhere, and it turned out that these women, many of them, were underage or children. All right. Um, and some knew what was going on. Maybe some didn't, but nevertheless, it went down. And the ones who, who didn't know what was going on and went and saw it, they didn't say anything. Well, maybe they didn't say anything because their pictures got taken uh, in the midst of this. And it just looks, that's just a bad look because you could be completely innocent of it. But your pictures, your image has been taken around these underage, you know, you just caught up. But I'm going to not even give them the benefit of that doubt. I believe the majority of these people knew and were very well aware, well aware of what was going on. All right. So, you know, they give you that drink, you know, those philosophies to drink them. And, you know, you drink them and now you're in a bad way. And now you're, you're being shamed. Verse 16, thou art filled with shame for glory. Glory, thou art filled with shame for glory. Drink thou also. And let thy foreskin be uncovered, and the cup of Yahweh's right hand shall be turned upon thee, and the shameful spewing shall, shall be upon thy glory. So, you know, even with their history, everything is coming out on Esau Edom. All the lies, the murder, the rape, robbery, murder, the land theft, uh, the, the use of their, their justice system un, un, uh, unethically and unequally and unjustly against uh, uh, certain demographics of America. Right, which we don't even need to name. <laughs> All right, they're just being exposed, and the horrific things that they do to children, which is, you know, there, there's no forgiveness for that. This is Second Thessalonians two. The whole the whole chapter is fire, but I'm gonna read. I started. I'm just read verse eight. All right, and it says, "Then shall the wicked be revealed, whom." Yahweh shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. And that, that mouthpiece is destroying them are the prophets, the men of the Lord. All right. That are, that exposing all this wickedness and that vibration that the men of the Lord have exposing Esau, Edom is moving through the world. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, Wa'ababababal, Kwam Yasharala, Shalawan.